Hey everyone, welcome to Photography and Friends Live. I'm here with Sam and Will. We Hello. are excited to be here. And uh, yeah, as you can tell, we got the memo to dress nicely today. Yeah, man. <laughs> trying to be a little extra here for you today. Plus we got these shirts. The production value. <laughs> yeah, I was just talking about Will's hat. <laughs> Uh, cool. Well, we're just gonna get started in a minute, but I just wanted to say welcome to everyone. If you're watching the replay, you might want to skip ahead for 30 seconds or so just to get to the actual content, but we're actually really excited to be here today for April's uh, edition of the live stream. We got a really cool one coming to you today. A lot of fun uh, updates, critiques, and of course, we're going to be answering all of your questions live um, at the end of the stream. So if this is your first time here to a live stream, comment in the comments and let us know if this is your first one or not. I'm just gonna get all set up here. How are you guys doing today? I'm okay. good. Doing good? Good. good. Uh, have a full week down here in Los Angeles. It's spring, so everything's green and flowers and you know, it's, it's yeah, it's nice. Cool. Well, it's nice. getting hot. Yeah, it's starting to get, it's like, man, spring in LA, it's like so short, and now it's like already feeling like, like this summer. Should, this should be summer weather. If yeah. this was the peak, yeah, yeah. it's like, it's just hot enough, it's nice. It's got to, you, you just... got to move down to San Diego for that, I guess. I don't, you I don't just know. know where... It's going to get more brutal. We got a couple first timers. That's awesome. How's it sounding? How, do you got, it, it sounded like people, I someone just... was having issues, can't see or hear, but... Sounds like everyone can hear us. They're getting there, yeah. I'm trying to monitor it here. But... And as always, post where you are listening or watching from. It's so exciting for us to hear uh, and see people from all around the world as part of this community joining us for uh, our live stream every week. So if you are uh, watching from somewhere else, let us know. All right, let's see how I can do this. I really like yo, this Yo, 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 love the shirts. How do I get one? Ooh, how do you get one? That's a good question. We are going to be announcing that in just a minute um, when we go over that. Okay, let's get started with our live stream. I'm just like trying to catch up. El Paso, Texas in the house. Nice, what's, what's up? up? We got Philadelphia. Houston. We got a couple Johns in here. Southern California. Ooh, we're in Southern. You can't see Southern California. South Africa. Keep nice. going. I, 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 I'm fixing <laughs> this. I really want to get that. Scotland. I uh, love Scotland. Uh, British Columbia. Columbia. I cool. we gotta do a trip up there. I every time I see photos from up there, I'm just that's stunning. Listening from Ireland. Nice. Not hot here at all. Here that good. Things. India, <laughs> Van Nuys. Van. Oh, Van Nuys. That's Van Nuys. Nice. <laughs> That's very close. Well, always, <laughs> always got the jokes. The jokes. Uh, Miami, Florida, uh, Victoria, British Columbia. Mm. Very cool. Oh, okay, cool. Sorry, guys. I was just, you know, as I do, technical difficulties always. Um, but I think we are about to, <laughs> about to begin. All okay, right, cool. Nice. Okay. Again, welcome everyone. Today we're gonna to be just doing uh, an update. We're gonna be featuring some weekly challenge uh, submissions. We thought it'd be cool, well, I haven't even told these guys yet, but I thought it'd be cool <laughs> that we uh, feature the photo that gets the most likes from every weekly challenge because oh. at the end of the week, it's kind of like nothing has happened with it um, so far. So we're gonna be featuring the past few weeks top, top liked photo. Uh, we're going to be doing some photo critiques and talk, having our weekly or monthly camera chat. We've got a really engaging topic today. And then, of course, live Q&A. All right, so just basic, some quick updates. So a lot of you saw this week and saw last week, uh, we asked about the privacy of the group. We have changed the privacy of the Facebook community to a closed group. Um, and just to clarify, I think there was a little bit of confusion uh, when before this it was a public group, but that didn't mean that anybody can join the group. Uh, I think I saw some people talking about wanting this to be just a group for people of our courses or the photography masterclass specifically. We did open it up to students in all of our photography courses, but what this means now is that your friends or people who you are connected to won't see any posts of yours into the group. Um, and I think that will help people who are beginners feel a lot safer. Totally. Um, and it's just, obviously, we, we did the poll, and majority, overwhelming uh, people wanted it to be a closed private group. 
And of course, we want to listen to you and respect that. So we're excited to move forward. And um, just kind of along with that, there was also some discussion of just a lot of beginners feeling a little bit intimidated by the more professional photographers in the group and just feeling a little bit nervous about posting their photos, asking questions, feeling like the group has gotten a little bit too advanced. But we just want to reiterate that this is a group for all ranges of photographers, but it really is for beginners too. And I think the best way to continue to make it beginner friendly is just for you to continue posting your photos. Uh, being, it, it takes being a little bit brave, but putting out your photos, even if it you don't think it's as good as the other ones that are being posted, asking your beginner questions. There are so many friendly people in the group that are willing to help. And if there's anyone that is being unfriendly or or you feel is not contributing to the group in a good way, just let us know or report that person. Uh, we do have kind of a zero tolerance policy for any sort of um, bullying, hate speech, any cussing or anything. Zero, zero tolerance. We're gonna, we're gonna remove those members. And unfortunately, that we have to have that just so we can keep this a, a family friendly space. Or fortunately, for, for, for most yeah. people, some people don't like that. But we want to keep this a, a family friendly space. No, but we're, we're yeah. here for photography. I mean, yeah, we should be willing and, and able to, you know, share what we've learned along the way. And we all, at some point, were taking photos that we weren't fully happy with. And yeah. the whole reason for this group, the whole reason you took this course or one of these courses, is to learn. And no one should feel worried about sharing what they take because. Yeah, it might not be the best photo, but you're sharing it on a Facebook group of photographers yeah. and you're not sharing it to try and like sell something or do anything big with it. Like it's to get feedback and learn from it and get advice from other people. And uh, yeah, I, I really think people should should focus on that. And, and if you see someone post something, give them constructive criticism, give them share your thoughts. And from what everyone says, like take it with a grain of salt. Yeah. You know, at the end of the day, it's like it's just their opinion. Yeah. You're going to approach it how you're going to approach it. And yeah, I think we're all learning too. Like I still feel like I'm learning. I've learned from a lot of our students too, like just seeing stuff. So like, yeah. even when we post stuff, like uh, the photography is like endless and it's just, we're constantly learning. I think we keep that in mind too. Like no one yeah. knows everything or like there is really nothing to know all of. So anyway, so yeah, yeah. it's a good, it's a good thing to just keep learning. Yeah. That's awesome. And trying new things. Yeah. yeah. And just another thing about the community rules, there's, also no self-promotion or anything like that and sometimes there's the kind of a blurry line of someone posting something and then asking for followers on instagram that's one of those things where if it's clearly someone who joins the group just to attract followers to their own page or something like that we don't want that to be really the main reason for people um, participating in this group of course we want people to be posting their instagram feeds or or whatever um, for people to be able to find them and find more of their photography but that should be a secondary focus to getting constructive feedback or inspiring or educating the rest of the members in the group so um, if you see just if you see anything that's a little questionable um, just report it and we'll take a look at it so anyways just wanted to say thank you for everyone and just let you guys know about that um, a couple other quick updates um, I'm actually doing a little solo Canon DSLR course, uh, just a really mini, just basic DSLR course. So that's gonna be coming out in the next few weeks. So stay tuned for that. Um, before we do personal updates, <laughs> we do have merch. As you can see, we are wearing the first Photography and Friends t-shirt. And so let's get just over here really quick. You can get your own at videoschoolonline.com slash store. And uh, we're really excited. That takes you to a Teespring site where you can buy your own shirts. They're like 20 bucks for shirts. There's even a sweatshirt option if it's still cold where you live and you want to get the sweatshirt. Um, and I don't know if anyone's going to want to wear a photography and friends shirt, but um, it would be order the sweatshirt. It would be dope if you guys did. And if you it, once you do get your own to show it off with pride, I mean, just to let us know that people are you know wanting to be a part of the community and wear our, our shirts with pride post it to the group or tag us on instagram or I'm something sure we'll like that post it or something yeah yeah oh, yeah. If, yeah for sure I'm, i i think a lot of people should do this because i'm always interested when I'm like out in the streets or something i'm like 
I wonder if any of these people are in the class. Because I always yeah. see people, you know, out there taking Yeah. Photos, so. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. Like, I wonder if any of these people are in the I class. I wonder if you have seen this before. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah so if you take a be the first me, one like, to do that. <laughs> I'll, I'll definitely repost you in my story. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, videoschoolonline.com slash store for that. Uh, just quick update, the black and white photo competition, you've got about a week left to submit your photos. So far, there's over 322 entries. Uh, really exciting, um, some really amazing photos that yeah. have been submitted. And um, starting May 1st, uh, you can, you'll be able to vote for your favorite photos. So stay tuned for an announcement about that. Um, but any other personal updates? What have you guys been up to since the last uh, month? Go for it. No, I mean, I, I've got a whole section, I think. Yeah, yeah. Will's, Will's starting his own, a new kind of headshot photography business, so we're going to be talking about that in a minute. Yeah. Sam, what have you been up to? <laughs> I haven't been doing anything. <laughs> I, I, have, I have nothing interesting to contribute to this. That's not oh. true. A little gravity water. Just talking about that. Yeah, oh, that, yeah. that, was, that was all. That was That's all doc stuff. Time yeah. ago, yeah. yeah. I've, I've been doing a lot of film work, a lot of documentary stuff, uh, enjoying living in Santa Cruz, but yeah, I, I'm really... <laughs> My update is I'm really excited to start camping in the springtime. <laughs> and <laughs> Sony just added the, inter really the built-in intervalometer into their cameras with a firmware update, which I'm just so excited to go into nature and do some um, some time-lapse photography and and just start playing with all that. So and yeah. and Sam, can you just look that way nope. just for a minute? No, 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 <laughs> because no, no. I think everyone deserves to realize how awesome your hair has gotten over the past <laughs> few months because now you can officially put it in a ponytail. Yeah, I'm, fi I'm finally there. It's, it's taking a long, long time. But, uh, it's been a long road. Claps, likes for Sam's ponytail, everyone. <laughs> likes for Sam's ponytail. Wait, the, there's negative likes now. Yeah. Oh. Um, cool. What about you guys? What have you been up to? What have you been uh, learning or taking photos of? Comment in the comments and we'll, uh, it, we'd love to hear more from you guys. So, uh, Will, speaking of Will's updates, he, well, yeah, you take it away. What have you been doing the past month or so? Um, so, I think we, we kind of briefly talked about it in the live stream uh, last month, but I've started a new headshot business. Uh, mostly it stemmed out of, like, having a lot of actor friends. Um, and so, because of having a lot of actor friends and um, our studio is, like, kind of close to another stage that we're able to rent, um, I've started getting into doing headshots. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it's a quick little side business for me um, and it's really something that like I wanted to be able to do on a whim and quickly and it's something that any of you can do like this is the part of it. I've purchased a lot of colored backdrops which you'll see more later mm -hmm. but this is shot with the Fuji X-T2 the 56 uh, millimeter lens uh, at an f4 and I'm not setting up a single light on any of these. Mm -hmm. These are all just a giant garage door light coming in and just kind of just like nicely, nicely, evenly covering just the subject and the background. Nice. Um, and I'm just exposing to the subject. These are obviously touched up a little bit in, in post-production, but you can see how like, I don't know, you can kind of see in their eyes the giant door and, and myself. It's probably a little hard during the stream, but uh, easy, right? All I needed was yeah. a backdrop, the camera, and the giant door. It, it was amazing. I came by the, one of your shoots, and it really... I mean, if you, you see these photos, and it looks like it's in the studio space and, it, you know, had a bunch of lights set up or something. And it's literally, I mean, I wish I had a photo of it. It's the, the funniest looking thing because it's just a backdrop. Yeah, in the middle of this. In the middle of this, stage. like, room with just nothing else around. And then I think you had to light in the back ground just to like oh i think there when... there's times when i close the door and did like a single light sort of session yeah, but like yeah. most of these they want you know this is like a very commercial look right yeah it's all evenly lit there's color they're popping um i can kind of pick and choose the background based on the person's skin tone or like their eyes you can see on the left uh she's got nice blue eyes i felt the background looked really good mm -hmm. um so you know it's all it's all really easy and it's something you guys can do and so it's something further we're going to explore i think the next session i set up we're going to bring along a video camera and we're going to dive more into it yeah cool and well like you said using your xt2 which is a crop sensor camera it's an amazing camera literally, but like your xt2 is right here with the same lens I use. <laughs> yeah, this is literally yeah. what i use <laughs> yeah. to get these photos like and that's it. yeah just which, a big open door and paper backdrop which costs like maybe 40 50 bucks 40 or... bucks yeah i think for the smaller ones and i have a couple bigger ones some people like wanted to do more full body shots i mean um, and we've talked we've talked a little bit about this in the course and i think we'll probably expand this into more sec lessons in the course or even a, a its own course of starting a photography business because 
Uh, we did a poll last week for all the students about topics they're interested in, and that was the most yeah. liked topic by far. Um, but really quickly, like, what did you do to get like these first clients? Um, oh, because so you got a bunch of people. These are all friends. <laughs> It's like, perfect. These are exactly. All, these are all friends. So like, uh, so like, actually, the guy on the right, the guy that owns the stage, uh, and I told him I would do him a headshot if he let me use the stage for free. Yeah. Uh, you know, the girl on the left's a friend from like I, I I have a little group of friends I hang out with that are all actors, so that helps. And they all need headshots, so it's like we're helping each other. Yeah. And then it gives me a portfolio, and I think in the meantime, this it's not just the shooting that I'm dealing with right now. I've started a new Instagram. It's yeah. called Will underscore C underscore Photo that I'm starting to build up. Um, I've started a whole new workflow, like I'm shooting a specific way, I'm shooting with Ross, and then I started a new Lightroom catalog, like the whole process is like all self-contained, Yeah. Um, which I think we can kind of go into at some point and describe with people, yeah. but um, you know. And you got the hat. And I get the hat now. <laughs> I'm sorry. Makes, it's just, you guys sense. can po- you gotta poke fun at me. Do you know how? Do you know how much? You know, it, it opens people up. It makes people feel like silly and fun. Like I don't know. It's like a new persona. No, for sure. And because you look silly and fun. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, who doesn't want to smile for that guy taking it? Absolutely. Your photo? Will was just taking some family portraits of, of me and my wife and my boys this morning. Uh, we'll share those maybe next time. Uh, someone asked paper backdrop or adding in post. Paper. We talked about that paper. Totally. Someone paper. else asked to show the XT2 a little closer. No. There you go. Just because we focus. love. And, and really, <laughs> any. No, that's a. You know, that, that's a crop sensor focus. camera, but any oh, but telephoto, you know, going to 50 mil, millimeter plus. There you go. Full screen. Nice. And it's funny because there's some closer <laughs> shots, and I started shooting that with a one point. What is that? A one point two. And you can tell I didn't post any of those, but those. It's just the shallowness on that is just so gnarly. Yeah. Like you cannot shoot faces like this at a one point two. Yeah. Um, yeah. And normally I use that because you want the background to be more out of focus. Um, but because these are just giant paper, like you don't need the background to be totally focused. Use for. Yeah. Dope. Well, we're excited to see more about that. I'm sure everyone else is too. A um, couple other quick updates again. Uh, we got our top contributors of the month. These are the people that on Facebook have interacted the most, posted the most, commented the most. And these are really the all-stars who are making this group a great group for for everyone. So a lot of familiar people, Jim Tipton, I think this is his second month in a row. <laughs> so hats off to you, Jim. I think he deserves a free t-shirt. So Jim, Whoa. I'll reach out to you free t-shirt. Um, and we'll, we'll get you a free t-shirt. Ariane, Xander, Andrew, John White, of course, you've been here a, a, a while as well. Nilendu, you've been here. AG Archer, Terry. Xang and Tori, you, all of you, I see you guys posting all the time, so thank you. And of course, if you're not on this list, um, that's totally fine. Uh, we appreciate everyone who comments and asks questions, posts their photos for inspiration. Um, and yeah, love you guys. <laughs> What's the uh, link for the store for the... Uh... The link for the store, let me just go to that really quick, is videoschoolonline.com slash store. Okay. All right, now we're gonna feature the top liked photos from a couple of the past uh, weekly challenges. So here we've got from the take a picture of your office challenge from Irma wow. Oberholzer. That's cool. Love this photo. I mean, really creative with the depth of field, the subject choice. The lines. Yeah. It's really you, nice. The greens, how they match, and then you have the oranges. Mm-hmm. You have like, Foreground colors matching the background colors. This makes you feel like uh, whoever was sitting at desk just took off their glasses and is like, ah, it's been a long day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's what it feels like. Like, I get a lot of emotion out of it. Yeah. yeah. So thank you, Irma, that's for great. posting. And thank you for everyone for liking the photos and commenting on them as well. Uh, another one was the weekly challenge of taking photos of fire. So Anita Prasad, uh, thank you for this one. Pretty Anita. intense. I think I saw her here. Anita, you in the house? Anita's awesome. Yeah. She's she's here. Cool. Yeah, that's cool. Great photo. Very epic uh, fire right there. Big bonfire. Good shutter. Don't play with fire at home, though. <laughs> I don't know where you took a picture of this. <laughs> you know, Friday night, have a little bonfire <laughs> okay. with friends. It's a yeah. lot of bonfire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of bonfire. <laughs> cool. Fire photography. That's our next course. 
Fire photography. And I think then... fire versus water. Ooh. Both have like ah, this cool motion to them, you know? I like it. Do some slow cool. shutter speed stuff. Oh, oh sorry guys. Oh my oh. god. <laughs> <laughs> San Francisco calling. Uh, and then I think the week before was the take a photo of a car. Joe Whittingham That's took this this photo. Maybe it was automobile, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> <God>. <laughs> but, <laughs> but this photo of a truck, very cool. Do you guys awesome. think that do you guys think it's a it's the driver's side's on the right side or it's flipped? Oh yeah, maybe is this in like England or something? Oh jeez. I, I could see that being in England. Wait, is England? Do, do they drive on the other side? The windshield wiper is only Australia. on one side. Maybe it's a maybe it's a mail truck or something. A <laughs> milk truck, or a milk truck. Yeah, maybe, maybe a delivery a, truck. Yeah, delivery yeah. milk truck. Mm. Yeah. Can you picture Will just driving around on <laughs> that thing with his hat? Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Do you take that photo? No. Did I miss the teaching part? No, we are going to be teaching. I don't know what that is re- reference to, but we're going to be asking answering questions in uh, in a couple minutes. So stick around for that. Hold your questions. Um, but thank you for everyone for participating in the weekly challenges. Um, and hopefully this incentivizes you to participate and make sure you like the photos as well that you uh, you like. Um, all right. So next up, we've got a segment on critiques. So what I actually did was I pulled a few random photos from the black and white photography competition. Oh. Um, just because when whenever we feature the winners, we only go over really the winning photos. And I thought there's so many good ones. And I wish we could get through and critique every single one of them for you. But mm. um, just picking several at random, I thought it would be cool to look through them uh, this week. So. I briefly looked at them. Um, you guys haven't seen them, but let's just no. get to them, and we're just gonna do a quick little critique round of critiques. Whoa. So here's a photo. Fo- I mean, so oh many good gosh. ones. Here's here's one from uh, Tony Mullins. Great lighting. You guys, I've been talking a lot. So, I, what do you guys think? I think the lighting is like the most epic thing about this. I mean, just the like streaks, um, the black and white. Oh, sorry, we gotta put this on the screen. It's not on the screen yet. Oh, there you go. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, so the black and white is so good. Uh, the streaks of light, I think, are really great. I think the exposure is pretty much nailed, right? Because like, if you were to underexpose this too much, you'd lose the detail in his face. And if you were to overexpose it, it the streaks would just be awful. Yeah. So like, the, I think the exposure is like the most technically wonderful thing about this. Um, I wish the shutter was like a little faster so he's a little more sharp. But it does add a little bit of movement to it. This feels like a... Um, Man, what's that director? His eyes are it like... It feels like a movie, this to me. Yeah. The eyes, I wonder if he like played around and posted like he might have done a little like sharpening. It. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, I think it was good to do that for sure. Oh, yeah. It's it's amazing. I mean, this the the contrast throughout this image in color, because it, it definitely loses definition in, in some parts of those highlights. Mm-hmm. And it's why black and white so amazing. I mean, you can have that larger dynamic range Mm -hmm. and not have it you know look like it's not a high quality camera or not like you know i don't know it just i think helps the image so much i do think the only thing that's kind of bugging me because you have the light side on the right and then it goes dark i kind of that back whatever that gray square is in the background yeah um like on the left side i like it it's subtle it's like kind of mysterious back there on the right side it just it's too prominent for me yeah um and that's, you know, one of the biggest things I think as a portrait photographer, like you're so focused, you know, the eyes, the hands, I'm so locked into him, but just as an image as a whole, like the background plays a big part in that. And uh, that's the only thing that, you know, sort of sticks out to me. It's yeah. cool. I feel like the ability to recognize to take a photo in this moment is rad. Like mm-hmm. that's, that's a, that's a big part of like, not just the technical stuff, but just like having your eyes open, being aware and like shooting. Yeah. I wonder what he's doing with his hands. It just takes practice. Like, was he holding his hands like that, or was he in, like, like a movement? Yeah. He's a b-boy. Doing the like. <laughs> cool. Well, Tony, thank you so much for the photo. Yeah, good shot. Ooh, Here's I a love photo from like Brent this. Whittington. This is one of the ones where your photo, like, your, your eyes just go, like, from the top, it's like, and, like, yeah. straight. It just feels like those leading the, lines. The leading lines, like, the motion of it is so fun. And I think making this photo black and white works well. If it was a color photo, it, it might feel not as a little yeah. too busy or yeah, like you said, not as impactful, but 
the contrast is what is so great about black and white photos and this is like such a good like textured contrast uh to see this would go good like on your wall like yeah, frame like, like yeah. with a nice mat just print yeah. this huge okay. yeah big poster i love the the trees at the end too how they just fill in that space and mm -hmm. I mean, it's hard to get perfectly nice. symmetrical like that. It like you so can tell, now. like the center of the the wall down below is like centered in the frame. Like it's pretty much perfectly the same amount of space between like the tree or like the pillars on the bottom right and left. I mean, that can be done in post, which is great job if you edited it this way. If you got this out in the field, even like more impressive. I feel like I've tried to take this photo a million times and I've never nailed it this well. <laughs> like this looks great. Yeah, it's I mean top horizons level on the sides it's at the same point of those pillars. Mm -hmm. Bottoms level. I mean sometimes you'll get the top level and then realize that you weren't perfectly straight cuz you know the bottom mm -hmm. part won't be level. It's a great. You Would know. you have wanted him to tilt down just a little bit? I think there's something down there that would have distracted from the image. Yeah, I do, maybe. See, the, the thing that makes it too is that those two lines at the top are like perfectly, mm. almost perfectly going into the corners. Mm, yeah, these and those yeah. and yeah. those help yeah. with the two lines. I know yeah. we're analyzing the crap out of this, but like, <laughs> and the, and the V down here, like the Brent's double, like, yeah. I didn't think about that. the double V's. Well, that's the thing is, those are the types of things that you probably don't think about, but you know, visually, your eye just feels good to look at. Like this yeah. just feels nice on the eyes. Yeah, I don't know. What do you guys think? Post in the comments below. Thank you, Brent. And of course, everyone, you just randomly chosen. Here is one from Achudan Mani. Sorry if I mispronounce your name. What a good face. Um, interesting portrait, um, just interesting framing with yeah. that light bulb as a like, hat. As a hat. <laughs> and it has so much character to this image. The it's... bulb is the only thing that bothers me. The bulb is kind of bothersome, huh? But everything else is so good. Like that face is so good. The lighting, the exposure is so great. Lighting in the background too. Yeah. To break up. yeah. And even the shadow that it casts under his chin and mm -hmm. like on his body is like great. It's just that pulp seems so distracting. You know, you can fix that in Photoshop if you really spend some time. Yeah. I'm kind of okay with it. But though. like, yeah, like, well, the choice is like, okay, you take the photo, you tilt down or you get closer. You get so higher. you just. Yeah, either like completely miss the light bulb or you get higher so the bulb isn't in the, f like the f bulb cover is covering the bulb. That's so interesting. I'd be curious what, what everyone would do. Like, yeah. let, let us know what you would do. Like, I think I would frame out the the light bulb. I mean, framing out, yeah. Like, I would get lower. But then to maybe, get, get rid of the light bulb. Yeah, so the light was, completely. so the bulb and the light were just above frame. But, you know, maybe that would take away from, I don't know, the framing. Maybe it means something though, like it, it is a hat. He's having a, a light bulb over the head moment. Yeah. <laughs> in the head, yeah. No, I mean, uh, in terms of like a normal portrait photo, of course, like yeah, you do the down lighting, below, and, yeah. and we'd be like, it's a nice looking image, he has a great look to him, and like, but this is like it's a nice. style, yeah. This is, uh, I've never, I've never seen an image like that. Like that. That's true. I would never take an image like that. I wouldn't think to take an image like that. And, yeah. You know, that's, that's a cool part of it. Yeah. It is like a, white half dome in the middle of the frame, which is kind of strange, I guess, but. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, great photo, makes us, makes us think. All right, here's another photo from Marwa Kayali. Really cool, I don't know where this is from, oh, cool. um, but great job of framing your your subject within this, this frame of the rocks. Frame framing the, the, frame the frame within the frame. Lots of frames <laughs> in there. Right. Sam loves the framing of the frames. And I mean, just like, this is like a way more creative shot than if you were on the other side of this, looks like a rock wall or s something with the cutout, just taking a photo of the pillars and like a good job just backing into that area and having that frame. This is also really good. This is another good frame and place to be using black and white. I yeah. feel like, especially with the like solid kind of gray, white, or probably blue. Uh, sky. Yeah. Uh, it just brings this nice monotone like feel to like ruins and rock yeah. and like yeah. it's just cool. I don't, I don't think you could have gone the definition in the foreground. Like you're, you're, the sky would have been oh, blown been, out yeah. white. Like yeah. And if you expose to the blue sky, this all what you could have seen the same textures. And even was... if you did it, that'd be distracting. The color yeah. would be totally yeah. distracting from yeah. the texture. It's and it's cool. such a cool story though because it's an ancient looking um, pillars or mm -hmm. whatever it's called. 
and and then you have the rock in the foreground, which is probably more ancient than the thing. You know, they probably have this mm-hmm. cut out because they use a stone from that to make that thing or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it tells and a good, story. Good depth of field too, too just yeah. to get everything in focus. Um, that shadow. Nice to see the texture and yeah, cool. Marwa, thank you. I don't know if we have any more. No, we are done with our photo critique. So thank you everyone who submitted their photo to the black and white photo competition. Uh, Again, that ends at the end of the month. So uh, there's a link in the announcements of the group uh, with more information and where you submit your photos. So, and then we start voting on May 1st. How long will people be able to vote? They, we're gonna be voting for like 10 days. So May 1st through May 10th. So a little bit of an extended time this, this, this uh, competition and as I've mentioned before this is the first time where it truly is going to be the the popular vote we're not doing any electoral college <laughs> not to get political, <laughs> political. <laughs> okay sorry sorry but it's going to be a popular vote most liked photo is going to going to get the top prizes um, and, but we will have a participation prize like always so that's going to be a randomly selected photo is going to win a t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> so, Just off the cuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, so post your photos. Even <laughs> if you don't think they're, they're amazing, you can still win the participation pr- prize. Yeah. Um, all right. So today, this month, every month we do a camera chat where we kind of talk about something that's a little bit debatable. And this week we saw a lot of friendly debate in the group about whether you should have a watermark or not on your photos. So I figured that's something we should talk about. Um, And everyone here, we want you to participate as well. So post in the comments, do you think you should watermark your photos or not? And then also tell us why. Real quick, just a quick question. Can only students vote or is it just in the group? It's going to be anybody in the group. Um, I mean, yeah, we're ideally... I guess anyone who ends up on that website could potentially vote, but the point is that group, group members, yeah. students are going to be voting. Cool. Sorry, just one yep. question. Um, watermarks. Watermarks. How do you feel? I mean, I think the thing is none of us watermark our photos. I used to. I used to do it a lot. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh. So when I had a wedding photography business a long time ago, before I even met you guys, yeah. Uh, my business partner and I would would uh, would watermark everything, but it would be a very like light and small watermark um, and it was actually before a lot of um, it was before Instagram it was before social media it was before people would kind of like take it and post it and stuff yeah but we were more worried about um, uh, people printing stuff so we would we would send mm-hmm. proofs of like our of our wedding photos for somebody mm-hmm. and without them without like them telling us which ones they wanted for us to edit they would just take those and print them mm-hmm. and if a photo store saw the watermark they would ask for permission, like like a permission slip, basically. Yeah. And uh, and they wouldn't print them, so it was it was to protect us as a as a business. Um, now, with all the metadata in place through photography and Lightroom and stuff, um, in that regard, printing photo stores won't print it without permission, or unless you own the JPEG. Uh, so there's that. But now there's Instagram, and people are taking photos and reposting them and creating these crazy silly accounts. So I don't know, I don't know. I don't do it anymore though because yeah. yeah, I just feel like uh, it does take away from some of my photos. And if someone's gonna steal it, someone's gonna steal it. Like, it's not it's not gonna hurt me per se. I guess. I mean, it's tough. It's a because, personal thing. Yeah, it's it's tough. I think I personally don't use watermark. I think I've probably played around with it. Um, and there's definitely that benefit of if you're trying to protect your work, if you're trying to sell your work, and you don't want anyone to print it out themselves. Yeah, obviously having a watermark is going to help with that. But are the people who are going to download your photo illegally and print it, like, does it matter, like, if there's, I don't know, does a watermark prevent that? Or, like, or I guess I'm saying, like, if you don't watermark it, are people, like, those people are, like, aren't going to ever buy your photo anyways. Unless you're purposely selling them. Yeah, but that person who is like downloading it illegally to But where to, are they to, downloading it from? If you put it on Instagram or whatever. Like it's it's so compressed. Okay, if you put it on Facebook or on your own portfolio or, or, your, website. or your website or whatever. Yeah, Instagram does actually a decent job at compressing yeah. it. So, yeah. but it's kind of, I guess I 
relate it to like online courses because yeah, you deal with that a lot. Right? Yeah, like there's people who pirate all of our courses. Yeah, but at the end of the day, like, do we prevent people from downloading the the files so that they can easily access them on their computer, or do we watermark our videos? And at the end of the day, I realize I don't because the people who are going to go out of their way to find my course illegally download it. They would never pay for my course anyways. So it's like I'm not really losing their business. I mean, on the grand scheme of things, maybe, maybe Someone if pirating, if pirating yeah. like didn't exist at all, like I, it would benefit me a little bit. But I don't know. I think I think because you know Sam and I have a lot of followers on Instagram. Like the photos that we post, uh, people have reposted, which is yeah. nice, which is yeah. fine. And sometimes I've seen some where they'll like repost it and we'll just automatically get tagged, but they won't like put our name under it. That's bothersome, but I think the benefits of not having a watermark outweigh the negatives of having a watermark to me. It's uh, just for it, what I'm doing. Right. It, it's such a like Instagram. I've I've found my images elsewhere. Most of the time, people tag me. It's kind of flattering if someone goes and steals my image and posts it as their own. <laughs> I guess like and in in that regard, it's if someone were able to get those images and go and use it in some ad and make a bunch of money from it and like, dang, like I could have done that or this person just made money off me, then I'd be bummed, but they can't do that from Instagram photos. If I'm, all the prints I've ever done, it's for people that are directly contacting me. I'm doing the printing. I'm not saying them the files, like, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm, and I'm safe in that regard. And so I, I guess it, it kind of depends, like with the Facebook group, I could see people being worried of, that or, or even on our course, you know, I'll get photos and I'll be like, wow, that's, I, I'm not sure that the student took this. Yeah. And all the assignments. And yeah. I'll Google image search it. Yeah. And, yeah. and all of a sudden I find it in 20 other places. I'm like, yeah. Okay. And, and the fact that you can do that today. Yeah. That's crazy. And, you know, I, I think if people are going pirate, people are going pirate. And it's so hard to have any control over that. I, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't think there's a right answer, to be honest. Like, I think yeah. it's like a personal preference at a certain point. Uh, uh, Wendy Cross says she uses a watermark to get her name out there for, uh, for more than for copyright purposes. Mm-hmm. Um, it gets her business name out there and people know it's her working and so it might get, it's an easy way to share business even yeah. if someone takes it. And there's even like the, one of the photos you showed, I think it was the first one yeah. with the kid, the little watermark in the bottom corner. That mm-hmm. was like a very like small, distinct, like, you know, not, I don't want to say classy, but it was like. Yeah, there it is. Signature. Yeah. It's, a, it's a signature. You can't necessarily read it, but like, you know, it's there. It's the branding. Um, yeah, it's across something that you can't easily clone out, um, mm-hmm. you know, which which is also like depending on watermark. So there's certain levels at which you can apply them uh, yeah. that don't take away from the image. So again, it's like, I feel like it's such a personal choice. Yeah. And it's, it's a style also. I mean, I do think I've seen some watermarks that are distracting from the image. I think that's the and thing. And I wish that it day. wasn't there because yeah. it's like, oh, I just want to enjoy this image. But I get it. Like, if you are getting your name out there and all that type of stuff, like, I, I fully understand it. I mean, it's it makes sense to me. Mm-hmm. I just personally don't. Yeah, especially get your name out there. Like, it's automatic. I think that's probably the better reason. But if you're going to do it, my advice would be to keep it super simple. Keep it clean and small enough so that it doesn't distract because that's i guess that's the negative side of having a watermark like any other reason why you i mean yeah because it's distracting it's like ugly on a photo that i do think on instagram it's a really hot topic of of people getting their stuff used and like i think there's a lot of people talk about you know if you're gonna repost someone else someone's thing tag them and it's like become very like it's like an ethics thing yeah it's like becoming (laughs) more of a norm now but it is yeah Uh, it's hard yeah interesting well no one has like it's interesting because there's not really a solution to the this problem though i mean there's like the metadata you talked about like on a photo that's that's like like a print store yeah not necessarily like instagram and screen sharing and screenshotting and like you know assignments or whatever like it's it's so hard to like i don't know it's weird. I don't know. The technology just has to advance more and maybe it, it will and get to the point where there'll be some sort of right. protection. Like yeah. on Netflix, or maybe, I can't remember which one it was, Netflix. I Sometimes when I'm doing cinematography stuff, I want to screenshot references. 
and it won't let me. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, okay, I get it. Yeah. Like, that makes sense. Well, it's like um, Instagram, if you go on the website desktop version, you can't, like, download a photo. Right. Like, right click, like, save. Like, yeah. you, you can't do that on Facebook, you, though, so. Yeah, you can only, like, screenshot or whatever. Yeah. And, and the quality, then, is not as good. Yeah, but whatever so. security thing they come up with, there's gonna there's be someone. ten ways yeah. that yeah. you can go yeah. and hack yep. around that. No, totally. And, yeah. and that's at the end of the day why I don't worry about the pirates who are gonna steal any of my content because I can't control that. At the end of the day, that's it's true. just gonna happen. But to to Wendy's point, like I do see people recognize it as yours. Like you know, mm-hmm. maybe you're going through that Facebook feed. You I mean, there's thousands, and thousands of photos, and if you keep seeing this one mark. Mm-hmm. Like you'll associate that person with, yeah. and you know that you you recognize that. Yeah. You know maybe that's there's something definitely a good there. marketing tactic. Like, yeah. For sure. yeah. Yeah. I do think I've seen watermarks on Instagram before. I'm like, it's such a small image. Like yeah. I, I can't even see what that thing yeah. is. But I guess it does. Yeah. I mean, on Instagram, if it's your, well, yeah, it just goes back. If it's on your profile, then it's like. Why would you need a watermark? Your branding's yeah. right there with your name, but if someone steals it... That's the thing. Is there's all these accounts that are, I see a lot of models share, like, yeah. do that because there are accounts that are like, you know, these are like, you know, the specific Instagram's built for like a certain thing. Yeah. And they don't do any photos, they just take them Yeah. Yeah. else. So, uh, yeah, and they, I they, they write all credit due to the photographer. Great. Yeah. <laughs> Cool, but like, yeah, that doesn't help. I, I don't know. If you're if you're if you're doing fine and you're happy with the way your photography is and your business is not hurting you, yeah. like directly, I feel like there's not much you can do. With that. Yeah. I do think if you're gonna print photos for people, what I like personally because I'll, I'll print it myself, sign the back or something, mm-hmm. opposed to printing a photo with a watermark on it. Mm-hmm. Because I, I think if you're gonna print it big, like it's so much nicer to look at the image and then do something on the back side of it to, to mark your. <laughs> Someone said, who is that that posted? <laughs> all <Francis> Hutchings? <laughs> you all can use any of my photos. I'd be honored to have them. I appreciate it that much. No stealing necessary. <laughs> That's funny. Well, this was a great uh, little friendly debate. Um, good ch- camera chat. So now we have uh, we are to our Q&A session. So if you have any questions regarding anything related to photography, uh, now's your chance to, to ask us. Um, so I don't know if we've got any questions no from questions earlier, I'm or, waiting. Just, but post, just on the course. post your questions in the comments. I, I think if you're going to do a little Canon one, maybe maybe I should do a little Sony one. And, uh, yeah, I think you should. We'll, we'll do a little Fuji one or something. Yeah, I think you should. Do Fuji one. Or you could do a Nikon, because that was more popular. Mm, yeah. 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 No questions yet, but uh, I'm thinking about buying an X-T3. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's such a good, it's a pretty good deal. The, the only thing is like, is it worth upgrading from the X-T2? Is it going to be that much better from the X-T2? And then the X-T4, is that going to come out in like a, a year? I think it's, it's going to be a while for the X-T4. It might be a little while. And I think the, the jump is not going to be as big. Yeah. The focus is so fast <laughs> on the X-T3. Oh that's, I mean, that's the main, that's the... Speed of focus alone, yeah, um, or, is why I upgraded my camera. Yeah. This. It was like, you just go from one to the next, and it's like, oh my gosh! Even even that the, is the, just shooting you, Phil, out there was like I could tell it's like a little, it steps a little, it's a little slow. I'm yeah, I need it to be a little faster. Yeah, I mean, if, and I guess the XT3 has better like the eye focus tracking with the yeah with the new firmware updates and stuff. I can get, yeah. a, I can get a gray one. All right, here's a couple questions. Okay. Um, what's the difference between face shots and portraits? What's the difference between a okay? So probably like a headshot and a portrait. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, head. I mean, a lot of the time when people say like, headshots, it's, yeah. it's really meant for like um, business or whatever they're in. Mm-hmm. So like they're gonna use it to like showcase who they are and what they do. Versus a portrait it could be for art. It could be kind of in any sort of done in kind of any sort of manner. Mm-hmm. Or okay. Headshots are very specific. Like we want to see this person. A headshot right is a kind of portrait, but a portrait isn't a headshot. Deep. Yeah. That's, right. Yeah, that's good. Like. Yeah. All headshots are portraits, portrait. but not all portraits are headshots. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I I think of a headshot is like when someone's going to use that headshot for their LinkedIn profile or for their. Their business, their business, thing, or yeah. whatever it is, not necessarily like to print it out and hang it in their f- family room or whatever. If you're walking on the street and take a photo of someone on the street, it's a portrait of that person, but it wouldn't be a headshot. Yeah. So. Uh, Follow up question: That was how long do you guys how how long you guys shoot? Which I mean, I guess that's when I'm shooting a headshot or a portrait. I shoot for probably about I don't know an hour. 
Do you think it's time or do you think it's focal length? Uh, I don't know. Could you clarify, <laughs> Ivo? <laughs> um, can you review my photo? I don't know if we can click on that through the. No, the sorry, we're not gonna. We can't do any live critiquing during um, the live stream. Looking for a lens for food photography, can you advise me which one is good for a novice like me? Woof. Woof. That depends. 35. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, if you can get like some sort of, I mean, I don't know. I feel like even an 85, it just depends on what your setup is and what camera you're using and like how you shoot. Really. Definitely a higher up stop. I feel like you wouldn't want to super shallowed up the field necessarily. Yeah, it just depends on what you do. I think for our food class, I was using the 35 or 50 most yeah. of the time. Yeah. Because if you have a full dish and stuff, you don't want like... Yeah, you don't want to be stepped out really far and you want yeah. some depth. Um, but you want it like to be the sharp. Thing. Yeah. Uh, but then also, like, sometimes you want to shoot macro with food. Yeah. So... Ma yeah. A macro... There's, like, that 40 macro or... Or, like, when we did our video food, we got diopters. Well, that's, that's a whole... Different. That's yeah. a whole <laughs> well, I would say, though, for food photography, like, something a little bit more telephoto looks nice when the background's a oh, little yeah, bit more crushed rather than, like, a wide-angle lens, like, yeah. of... But no, those like plate shots. Mm -hmm. yeah. Looking straight down, it's like the whole. Is thing. that a wide angle lens or is that a? I feel like the easy answer is like a thirty-five or a fifty. Twenty-four to seventy-two point <laughs> eight. That's the answer. To I mean, for for someone starting off, I I really think that <laughs> lens. Yeah, you could probably do it with twenty-four to seventy. Yeah. And, and, Are we gonna and, do that documentary, the twenty-four to seventy? The hero, yes. the hero lens. Shh. Yeah. That's still our idea. Photography and friends. It's watermark. Easy. <laughs> um, I'm a beginner planning to buy a DSLR camera. How is the Canon Rebel SL2? I have not shot with that, but uh, I know someone that's doing a Canon DSLR class. What's the well, SL2, SL2 though? Is the Rebel SL2? Oh, that's the. Is that the mirrorless? No, no, no. it's a DSLR. It says up there, right? Yeah, I'm sure it's probably fine. Like it's just like a basic. Stick. Yeah, it's just like one of the basic entry level um, crop sensor cameras. So it's yeah. it's. I don't know the specific specs of that versus something like the Canon T7i, which is their like other entry level um, DSLR. I would have to look at. Two megapixel. That's good. I, I don't it's think anyone's ever used processor. it, but usually at that level for a beginner, it's it's a great it's it's a, probably a great camera. Yeah, yeah. The screen flips out. Yep. Yeah, I mean, it depends on what you're coming from, too. And you, maybe you can answer this, but, like, what camera do you have now? If you just have your phone or another point and shoot. shoot yeah. um, upgrading to that's great. Um, if you have another DSLR, though, it's probably not that much of an upgrade to get upgraded. Lenses. Um, Lenses make all the difference. What pages do you recommend to build a portfolio? Um, on a website? Uh, maybe no. clarify a little bit, but, like, I, I've been using, so my new headshot stuff, I'm using Zenfolio, mm -hmm. um, which I've been using for a long time, and that really lets you customize stuff, and it also gives client access, um, so that's kind of nice to use. I don't know, have you guys used anything else? Have you used stuff? Z Zenfolio's it's a little pricey, It's totally though. expensive, yeah. yeah. It's, 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 um, it's, for me, it's worth it, but that's because... You know, I can yeah. I can charge people, yeah. but if you're just starting out, I'm not I'm not. Mm. I mean, doing like a Wix or like you know any website kind of thing, and, and just creating a photo gallery on there, Squarespace, any of those, you can do it. Um, honestly, Instagram is one of the best ways to show your photography and have like sort of a portfolio. It's not a website though. Um, 500 pics is a good one. Uh, there's a great community on there. Flickr is another good one. Flickr's good, yeah. I would um, say also just focusing on your Instagram and like building out how your gallery looks as a portfolio yeah. if you're just doing Instagram. It's hard going from like free to paying for it because it's sort of a, a big jump there. Once you start really cataloging a bunch of photos, it takes up memory space. So you have to pay for that space. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I love uh, Squarespace. I've seen great things oh, yeah, from Oh yeah, I do use Squarespace for, for my their video, gallery video, video stuff, yeah. Yeah, their it looks little gallery plugin. It's that's great. Very customizable. Yeah, and I think that's ten bucks a month, twelve bucks a month, stuff like that. Yeah. Um, going back to the Canon camera, uh, he's coming from a phone. Oh, perfect. So, yeah, then that's a great camera to upgrade from. You can start building out your kit, your lens um, kit, and in the future, if you want to upgrade, you can. But that's a great camera just to start with. And then um, going back to how long have we been shooting? It's how long have we been shooting? Oh. <laughs> I have been shooting, oh my god, for a long time, probably 20 years. 
I mean, shooting, like, I've been taking photos my entire life. Yeah. But I guess it's a, more as a photographer, I don't know, I'd say, like, since college for me. I mean, high school, I took photography class, but... I took photography class in high school when I started, when I was, like, 13 or 14. I started taking photos for the yearbook, and then... In high school? Yeah, in wow. high school. On film. And so I would go to events <laughs> nice. using film. To, and then the last year of high school, the admissions magazine at my school started paying me to take photos at mm-hmm. the events. Wow. So I've been being paid to do photography since I was, like, 17. Wow. Yeah. That's so pretty like good. 40 years? No, 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 no. <laughs> I was like, how high is he going to go? 30? 40? 40. That's big. That's yeah. nice. Yeah. My, my first, <laughs> I, I worked with, with the, uh, the college newspaper. That was my first paid... Yeah. Photography job. That's a good one. Yeah. So we've all been like, you know, 12 plus years, each of us. Oh my God, it's been a long time, like, since college. It's yeah. crazy. But, but taking photos, yeah. I mean, I, my dad hit, would hand me his cameras on vacations when I was like eight. I think taking photos is good, but like, there's a different mentality when, when you know you're shooting for a client. Like, when oh, someone's yeah. paying yeah. you, you're like, and yeah. that, that takes practice and like time and like, you know, even, st- I still get nervous. Last week I was like freaking out. <laughs> Well, like, you know, I think the thing I is... I was nervous when you're taking photos of Phil's kids. <laughs> like, I hope the, show, likes Will. The, th- the thing is... Okay, so while well, back up. So my first actual paid gig was actually after college. It was when I worked at a small college in their media department doing video. And they were like, oh, you know how to do video? Can you take all of our professional photos too? And I'm like, sure. So that was probably like seven years ago now. But like, the thing is... If you, like, take the class, <laughs> if you practice, practice, practicing, practicing, you know so much more than, like, the average person. Yeah. And, like, so, for example, my sister got engaged a month ago or so, and they had their engagement party. They are like, oh, can you come take engagement photos of, of me, of us? And I don't really do that that much. I've done, like, some portrait sessions, couples photography for friends. But I'm like, dang, like, your engagement photos, that's a pretty big deal. <laughs> and so I went and did it, and, like, I had a lot of fun because I felt like it was no pressure. They're not paying me. It's my yeah. sister. So it's like, if they suck, it, like, doesn't matter. <laughs> they, I can do it again. But, like, they love them. And it's like, we should all just have a little bit more confidence in ourselves. Yeah, totally. because. And, and if you're starting off to sh- take photos of family and friends, like, yeah. for the exact reason yeah. you just said, like, you're learning the camera or you know the camera. Yeah. Family and friends are the best people to practice on. You can try different techniques. You can build try up your portfolio things. like Will's build doing up your portfolio. for his, exactly. his new like, business. And do that with everyone you know. Just bug your friends. Be that person that always has a camera. Yeah. And it'll make you so much more comfortable when someone does hire you to, you know, take them professionally because you, you know at least what shots you want to get and how to get them. And, yeah. yeah. Um, so this one could probably be answered pretty quickly by Sam. I'm changing from Canon to Sony. Woo! I decided to nice. buy a Sony A7 III with a oh, Sony nice. FE 24-70 to 2.8 GM lens. What is your opinion? Thank you. Do it. <laughs> um, no, both am- amazing camera. I think there's no question nowadays like that is definitely a, a very popular camera. That lens is great. Um, I personally, I'm a prime person i love prime lenses but that's I, i've shot with that lens a bunch and it's great so um really excited for you really you know be sure to share your photos because yeah i don't think it's a bad decision yeah okay. and if you can sony's are you know a bit more complicated than canon's um watch a lot of youtube videos figure out what your camera can really do because there's so much customization and things you can do in there it, it's and it's that's endless. why Sam's going to make the beginner Sony DSLR mirrorless, exactly. or not DSLR, Sony yeah. camera crash yeah. course. Yeah. Um, Can't a, wait. A friend suggested that I save money by purchasing a Tamron AF 70 to 300 millimeter macro zoom lens for my Nikon D3200. Do you think mm. this is a quality lens? Hold on one second. The 70 to 300? <laughs> <laughs> this is your answer right here. If it's in his, like, uh, uh, look at that. Okay, this is the Canon version, and this is the first tele well bigger zoom that I had. Um, this is the seventy-five to three hundred. Is it macro? Yeah, is macro. It? Yeah. Okay. To be honest, it's hard for me to recommend this lens. Well, his, he's looking at the Tamron. Yeah, this oh, is the Tamron. Oh, that's a Tamron. Is it yeah, a two point eight though? Which because this is the f four to five six. 
So this lens, to be honest, it's not that great. Wow. Um, Look at this first-hand review here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's like great if you don't have any zoom lens and you want to have a bigger zoom lens, but like at the end or even like throughout the whole focal range, I feel like it's a little soft and yeah. that's just the quality that you get when you pay for something cheaper. I would look at, I don't know what the Sigma um, alternative oh, Sigma is, Sigma but probably. Sigma, Lenses are generally, I would say, better than Tamron. Um, I don't know. They've, uh, they've definitely gone more expensive than Tamron's as of late. But this is also an older version. Like, I got there this probably like, now. yeah, like seven, eight years ago. So there might be a newer Tamron. Um, you, when you get into like really telephoto lenses, you're paying for quality. And it really quickly, um, really quickly, you lose that quality glass glass and, yeah. and you know if you can find um i believe samron tamron makes the 70 200 f4 uh great like a little bit higher quality glass i think um but, all right so just to compare in oh, terms oh, of size and gosh. quality this isn't a lot this is for fuji oh i have not but that's about the same this is the 100 to 400 so a little bit different but but this is like the difference in terms of quality. And this is like saving up a lot and spending, I mean, four, five or six times as much as I paid for this Tamron lens. But the quality in this is like I mean, you so can tell, comparable. You can tell the glass is just bigger. So yeah, like, it's just bigger, it's better. heavier. And, but at the end it's of the sharper. day, if you're just starting out, like you're just not gonna have the budget to save up for something like totally. this, so. But if you know that that's what you want to be doing and you can save up for it. I mean, it is said worth primarily it. it's a price thing right now. Yeah. yeah. So like beginning out, you know. I honestly though, like I think it's better to shoot with what you have and make that rainy day fund and just save up for the big one. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, cool. Yeah. But moving on. Cool. Uh, Lenses. So this is not a video course, but I'm also in your cinematography course when shooting video and having to move the camera while recording. How do you ensure to not lose focus while maintaining a shallow depth of field? Practice. <laughs> That's all it is. Practice, maybe getting a better uh, external monitor. Sure, if you're doing video, like, getting so an external monitor better. with focus peaking. And like in my, I don't know what you guys do, but in my head, um, I am always constantly, because I'm switching camera systems all the time when I do video, yeah. is like, Left is close, right is far, so close, far, close, far, close, far. And then as I start to move in, I'm like, close, 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 far, 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 far. So you just, you just have, in your head, practice it. But seriously, it just takes practice. Using peaking to use peaking. Yeah, peaking on your camera, turn that on. Um, there's little focus assists that you can use, but um, I don't know. Autofocus? I still, I've been doing it forever, and it's still hard. Like, it's very hard. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Where to start for landscape and nature photography with no idea on camera usage, how to uh, initiate, I do have a Rebel T3, is it good enough? Yeah, I think a Rebel T3 is good enough to do landscape stuff. Cam cameras, absolutely. absolutely. It's more so the lens. Yeah, I mean, there. start with trying, I mean, if you don't have a wider lens, especially for that crop sensor camera, you're gonna want something pretty wide. Um, the Canon has like a 10 to 18, which is like a kind of entry-level lens that's <clears throat> relatively inexpensive um, probably pretty good we've talked about the Tokina 11 to 16 um, in terms of with no idea on camera usage <clears throat> well, take the class <laughs> <laughs> we have a landscape section yeah. so no uh, but it's I mean the biggest thing you can do with landscape photography <clears throat> have your camera have whatever lens you have currently and go out, go take some photos on in practice nature. It. Yeah, practice, see what it looks like to look at the sun, look away from the sun, use the landscape to frame your photos, and then you know share them on here, share them with us in, in the course, and we'll give you feedback and just practice, practice, you practice. You can totally use that camera to shoot landscape. Yeah. It's perfect. And the landscape's all about being in beautiful places. Like you need yeah. the subject matter to take landscape photography. You need like and the light, thing. and the light. You know, make sure you, you yeah. don't go like harsh lighting. Sunrise, yeah. sunrise, sunset. Before sunset. we get to the next question, it's the top of the hour, so I just want to say thank you to everyone who has participated and has been here, watched the video, or has been here live. Thank you so much. Hit that like button if you are enjoying 
the live stream and that lets us know that we should continue to do these. And if you haven't done so yet, make sure you leave a review for the classes that you're in on Udemy. Those reviews are really the best way to kind of pay us back um, and help us out for um, hopefully you liking the course and the community yeah. and the group. Um, uh, we're gonna run through some questions as fast as possible for the next 10 minutes or so. Um, but as we mentioned earlier and you saw um, at the top of the screen, you can get your shirt at videoschoolonline.com slash store. Um, and if you do that, seriously post post it to the group, post it to Instagram and tag us. Yeah. I will be so stoked if anyone gets the shirt. That'd be funny. <laughs> I think they should. They should do it. Um, and wear it out while you're shooting and people are going to be like, oh, what's that? And you'll be like, oh, you haven't heard of photography in Friends? It's the best way oh, to what? learn photography. Um, <laughs> here's a pretty big question, but I think this is everyone wants to know. You ready for this? Yeah, we're ready. I'm looking at the Nikon Z6 as a good all-around full-frame still video shooter at a great price point. I'm waiting for their IAF update and the 24-70 f2.8s supposed mm -hmm. to be out this year. I have other Nikon stuff, but I've seen so many good things from the X-T3 and A7 Mark III owners. Have you guys shot with the Z6? <clears throat> Sam jumped shift a little while back. Is competition worth looking at? The mirrorless game is changing everything. Smiley face. And you're coming from nothing? Nikon. Nikon? Nikon. It sounds like, yeah. I uh, have a local print shop, and I went and checked out a bunch of prints that the owner had been doing with the Nikon Z6, and they're pretty... Pretty cool. Yeah, it's I would, pretty good. Me, it's pretty pretty gnarly camera. Stay Nikon. <laughs> Stay Nikon. <laughs> I would Nikon. say. No, you, you if you've invested in it already, the adapter that they came out with for old glass is is it good? It's the top rated of uh, a, of any adapter. I've never seen everyone say that it works just as well. Maybe not as fast as on like their high end D three or like D eight fifty, but it works extremely well. And if you're also then looking to buy glass specifically for the Z six. Why, why spend money? Why start completely over? Yeah, like if you've got a whole set of Nikon's and you've been happy with Nikon, like yeah. there's probably no reason. Everything I've seen on the C6, it's great. Yeah, it's X3 is great. A7 III is great. Like they're all great. They're, well, they they're, they enable you to do everything you want. It's not like one really is. I mean, the A7 I think autofocus is a little bit faster. Sure. But a little bit like microseconds that you won't notice because you have a Z6 and that's what you're working with. I think so. the quality of the cameras is probably across the board like pretty good. But it's like how you work with it, what lenses you already own, and like how you how you function with the camera itself. Mm -hmm. I ended up switching to Fuji from Nikon too, but only because uh, you know Nikon didn't have a mirrorless. I think if Nikon had a mirrorless at the time, that was good. I probably would have gone yeah. with that. But the Fuji, I love Nikon because of yeah. the Canon 7D, and then I wasted a bunch of money and moved back to Sony. <laughs> Don't make my Sam, mistake. Sam's been through Learn a lot from... of camera systems. And that's not even video. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I think, I think it's a good, a good thing. Um, what do you guys think about buying used lenses? Uh, if so, what to look for and what to avoid? Oof. Oh, yeah, I get it. I, I, I think that Zoom... This Zoom? That <laughs> yeah, Zoom might have been used. But I got it from... Forget if it was BH or Adorama, but or K. It's pretty good condition, man. But like, just make. I always make sure it's like they have a ranking scale on all those sites if you're buying used, and I always make sure it's like the top two or three. Like, the thing is, lenses last a long time. Yeah, the investment in lenses is going to be better than your investment in camera, always. And if on the sites they say that there's some body damage to the lens, scratches and stuff. That doesn't really matter. It's more so, is there any damage to the front or rear element, the glass pieces, or anything wrong with the rings? So like, if those are a problem, don't get the lens. Yeah. But if they say, oh yeah, there's a scuff mark on the side, you know, check it out first. Um, most of the sites that sell used equipment, you can return it if you're unsatisfied. Mm -hmm. um, so check it out, make sure it works properly, and that that's what counts. But I mean, this, I bought a lens. I bought my Canon twenty four to seventy off of Craigslist actually, and. I brought my camera, tested it out, but at the same time, now I think, I don't know, I'd be a little sketched out about buying something on like Craigslist used if I can't like take it, look at the photos, make sure there's yeah. no dust or anything trapped in the lens. Um, but you save a lot of money, so. I buy used stuff from camera stores a lot. Yeah. Like that's probably my go-to thing because they've kind of vetted it and looked at it and typically they won't sell it unless 
Yeah. Uh, you know, and you can go to the store. You can shoot on your own card. You can come back. Yeah. So. Yeah. I like. I wouldn't trust. Depending on who Amazon's selling through or Craigslist, I wouldn't. I wouldn't use those. But yeah. a place like B and H, K, Adorama, a camera store, people that know cameras have looked at it, rated it. Yeah. You. I. I feel like you can trust those people. Do you some video questions? I don't know if we're, we're doing this. I guess it's answering. Just go qu rapid fire. Can you use R Rode Video Micro to uh, record voiceovers, or would a USB microphone such as a Blue Snowball do a way better job? Probably the Blue Snowball, right? Yeah, I mean, it's just gonna. It's more of like a workflow thing. Like recording straight into your computer is gonna be like so easy to do compared to the onboard camera mic, but um, you can do it. Uh -huh. If you want to use it to go out of the field, yeah, I think you get that a bit more diverse. Um, yeah. And then the last question that we have, it looks like I can't see anymore, is Canon or Nikon or Sony? All three. <laughs> By all three. Oh, no. Yeah. Um, Canon, Nikon. What about this one? This, Fuji? Is, this is the same one. Not thinking about ones you already have. Canon, Nikon, or Sony. My answer would be Fuji. Yeah. But that's a personal thing for Again, lenses specifically. Uh, Honestly, for people yeah, starting off, I think I would say Fuji. Oh, not thinking. If, if you okay. don't, if you're completely new, brand new system, um, mm. I I don't know. Like I, there's something about the Fuji and the tactileness of the top, um, it makes it more fun for me to take photos. Uh, we're such. I mean, this. now I can. Uh, I'll say I'm a Everything Fuji, Fuji fan fanboy. Um, but honestly, it's just like at the end of the day, falling into the analysis paralysis trap trap is something I do, we all do it, but it's just wasting your time because all the cameras are great. Oh, they're all great, yeah. But, okay, but the question is, Canon, Nikon, or Sony? We're gonna just let them not include Fuji, so. Money's no, money's no object. Top of the line of each. Mm. Nikon. I've never shot with Nikon, so I have no clue, but I don't know why <laughs> I'm like leaning towards Nikon. No, I'm just kidding. I... <sighs> is the X-T3 weather sealed? Yep. Fully weather sealed. I mean, yeah. So is this. <laughs> well, Sony's not. So. Um, uh, new mirror. Are we talking the mirrorless line or the DSLR? Man, like such a Dude, the, I mean, the D850 is an incredible photography camera. Yeah. Um, that like my heart has such like a soft spot for Canon because that's what I shot with the longest time. But it's been years since they've like really. Like listen to their their fans the first, yeah, and their yeah, users, yeah. and it's like I've waited and waited for them to to make something that's exciting, but they just haven't. So even though I think Canons are still like the top selling brand, maybe Nikon's very close, but like, um, Leica. <laughs> It's nice. It's Holga. the reason we're having a hard time deciding those because it just depends on what you're doing. Like you can't just. You can't just name a brand to be like, I'm going with it. Like, uh, but we're at the camera store <laughs> right now. There's a Canon package, there's a Nikon package, and there's a Sony package. Which one do you pick up and leave the store with? Nikon. Okay. Because at that point, for me, it's like, it's like brand loyalty. <laughs> like, it doesn't matter. Yeah. But if I'm like, I need to do video stuff, I'll probably go Sony. If I already have Canon glass, you Canon. I don't know. I'm just like I actually I don't know if I could go Nikon. I having the mirrorless system with Sony having no shutter sound. The Nikon when I've Z's, been shooting the, stuff. The Z6 has no shutter sound. It's mirrorless. Well, do I want to give a first generation of Nikon's mirrorless? It sketches me out. Like oh, I, I you're a first generation guy. You don't like you don't. I don't like the first <laughs> yeah. generation thing. <laughs> okay, know. if it was mirrorless. Ooh. Or Sony. DSLR? Oh, Sony, hundred percent. If it was DSLR, Nikon. I might go with the Canon, the 1D, <laughs> 1DX. So Dude, 1DX is an amazing camera. <laughs> if that's the camera. Yeah. Does it have an internal velometer? Nope. <laughs> Done. Nope. Nope. No sale. No sale. <laughs> it is crazy, though. All the all the event work I did with Major Laser, like traveling around, everyone was <laughs> Canon. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's awesome. <laughs> What? I was talking to a sale like that about this this morning. <laughs> yes, we know you need to have rice with you at all times. <laughs> oh man, how do I screenshot that? Oh, <laughs> that was good. That's you got me. Who Thanks, was Jose. that? Thanks Jose. Jose. Yeah. Yes. Okay. If you okay, if you're, the, rice with if you're at Why the camera you have store, with you? you have a, a bag Nikon of setup, a Canon setup, or a Sony setup, or a bag of rice. Which do you choose, Sam? <laughs> I mean, you should always have a bag of rice. <laughs>
That's awesome. Mirror, listener, you know, DSLR. And one day, you're going to yeah. fall in a puddle. <laughs> like, dang, I need a bag of rice. Jose, you got to be here next month, man. Yeah. Yeah. comedy. Yeah. All right. Someone asked about mirrorless or DSLR. It doesn't matter. Everything's going mirrorless, though. <laughs> Smaller form factor. I think go mirrorless, but yeah. Cleaning the sensor is a pain. Mm, that's true. Don't get it. Don't put it in the back. Love of you. Rice. Love you too. <laughs> All right, everyone. Thank that? you for being here. Um, yeah, for everyone who stuck around, I don't know what you guys. If you have anything better to do, but we I hope, appreciate. Yeah, I hope we gave some information. I'd say it felt fun, but I felt like, yeah. That'd yeah. Useful. Well, should we let them critique our photos sometimes? Ooh. Should like we all sometimes? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> should we critique each other's photos? Oh yeah. No, I think it's about the students <laughs> more than us. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, I think we should have them critique our photos. That's a great idea. Um, oh we'll set that up somehow in the future. Uh, but anyways, uh, thanks apart. thanks for being here. As always, um, give us some likes. Post your photos in the group. Ask for critique. Go to other people's posts. Share your feedback. Um, get a support, t-shirt. Support the beginners. Support the beginners. Help people out. Be friendly. Remember, like, where you were when you started out and how intimidating it is to, to share your photos or to ask questions, even if they're what you think are simple questions. Um, review our courses. Post your photos to the competition. Take lots more photos. Keep shooting. Take photos. Tag us in your photos. Follow us on Instagram. Is that enough calls to action? Um... Buy a t-shirt. That would make me so drink, happy. Drink lots of water. Stay hydrated. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Support your local YMCA. Yeah. And we'll see you next month. Yeah. Probably later in the month after the competition goes. Uh, we'll be announcing the winners during probably our live stream, um, depending on when it is. But um, love all of you. And thank you for being a part of the community. And we'll see you soon. Yeah. Thanks, everyone.